morning and welcome to the war room. I'm doing a wrap up here of uh, Quattro Bra by Hexasim, imported into the US by GMT. I thought I'd do a little epilogue, sort of wrap up of uh, what I missed or didn't cover and just some quick likes and dislikes about the game. I like the uh, rules overall quite a bit. I, uh, I'm not wild about the cards as we talked about. Uh, the uh, tactical cards especially. Um, it seems like taking a uh, re-roll basically for what you've been doing. I do like the strategic cards. That's a good way of picking sort of an alternate option without having your opponent know what you're up to. So those are good. I like those. I like uh, the tables and charts. Uh, I like them. The, I like the map and the uh, counters a lot. Great artwork on the box and uh, great uh, scenario cards. I like them quite a bit. They make it much easier to get things arranged and the, uh, the, little, the little maps for doing the hidden movement would be great if you were doing a two-player game and there's a, uh, a pretty decent turn record chart that has everything on there that you need to keep track of the turn and and uh, where you're at with the uh, rolls for end of turn and those sorts of things and I came up with a turn sequence uh, chart that I like that sort of summarized it all that I liked quite a bit and I also came up with a sort of leader chart to keep track of well, if I don't trip over the tripod, I'll be doing good to keep track of the various leaders' wounds and activations and so forth because uh, it kind of gets to be too many counters on the map and uh, gets messy to keep track of. Uh, here's the Anglo-Allied side with their reinforcement schedule and everybody on that track, which is nice makes it easy coming along you just peel everybody up and put them on the board once they're spotted uh, I think the uh, I find the the rules are good for the hidden movement and all of that uh, and the uh, activations if you have two players but where I play a lot solo I think I would just come up with a simple sort of die roll mechanism where you pick a leader to activate and providing He's in command and, you know, maybe some other variables like the leader's skill or something. You just roll a simple die and see if he's activated because I can't actually hide my own Easter eggs. I know what, <laughs> where I've given the hidden movement orders to and so forth. So it kind of takes a little of the uncertainty out of it, Whether whereas if it was a die roll, it would simplify things, streamline the game a little and make it uh, make it go quicker but also it would add that element of the unknown uh, a couple of things I didn't cover is uh, well I did briefly but uh, I didn't cover the rules uh, that uh, show you you know how uh, when somebody gets exposed by uh, being spotted how they come on like for example here in this situation where the uh, say the French cav was spotting over the hill and they came up over the hill and here's two hidden markers for this unit uh, moving along the road here and basically they would come over the hill and they would spot Picton's hidden unit and so you would flip them over and that one's the fake and then this one is the real one so of course the fake would go away and then Picton's unit would get spread out on the on the board uh, under the special rules here which tell you how they have to be revealed and I'm trying to find it real quick here in the rule book is it's fairly well, not complicated, but it's not real straightforward. You have to put them down within a certain distance and they have to uh, be no closer to the enemy 
but within so many hexes of Picton's reveal and it uh, gives it to you here in the rules and it gives you a good example of it and it's worth going through to make sure you're familiar with it and the same is true I didn't get into a lot of uh, the cavalry uh, benefits and bonuses and, uh, and how the attacks work and so forth uh, the gist of that is also good examples in the rules which you can look up and check out but uh, the advantage to having uh, cavalry involved in the attack is it gives you some bonuses especially for fire attack from artillery and the infantry so it's good to come up with cav and sort of attack from the rear and I guess the thinking is that makes them form square <coughs> excuse me and so all that's kind of taken into account in the rules and there's there's uh, some sheets online you can find that I like that sort of summarized the uh, caval cavalry quick rules you know a nice play aid that you can find and a couple other play aids that I either made or discovered like there was this one I found online there's a lot of good resources on uh, BGG BGG BBG um, and they have uh, resources available there I like the uh, the combined melee result table with the fire table on the back that they had uh, on their download section under, uh, I think it was, I can't remember if it was under Quattro Bras or under Ostelitz, but if you look around, you'll find them on their various uh, pages for the various games on Board Game Geek, BGG. Uh, some of the other things I liked uh, besides the uh, map encounters. As I said, I like the strategic cards, cards, didn't like the tactical cards so much. I like the game mechanics overall, it gives it a nice Napoleonic flavor. Uh, I, with, like I said, the solo play, it's all the hidden rules and all of those, and activation rules are kind of uh, extraneous. I, uh, the activation rules kind of make the turn go on forever, which I wasn't all that wild about. I kind of like a maybe a little bit simpler game, something you can play with sort of if you had two uh, two cheat sheets you could read through the rules uh, once and have the cheat sheets and then put down and play the game with a minimum of fuss and muss and extra counters around kinda of a lot of the extra tables with counters on them get to be a little distracting after a while for me but that's just me, I you know keep it simple for somebody simple like me. And that's basically the gist of it. A uh, couple of things I wanted to cover real quick. Again, I really like the series. I'm looking forward to getting into the other two. But I think now what I want to try is maybe, uh, oh, I don't know, World War II or perhaps uh, the uh, Great Battles of the American Civil War by. GMT and try one of uh, their scenarios and get a handle on that. So I'll go to doing one of those next and I haven't decided. If you have any preferences put something in the comments and uh, I'll start something up maybe later today. And I'll do a, I think I'll definitely do an open on Death Valley, a, a shrink rip on Death Valley because I haven't even opened that yet and started to clip the cards. Another couple of games I consider doing would be uh, The Dark Sands by GMT or maybe Stalingrad 42. I've opened it up but I haven't started punching the counters yet. So maybe I'll do a, uh, an unboxing of Stalingrad 42 as well as Death Valley. I'm really looking forward to the new Shiloh game coming out and I saw it already made its uh, pre-order a month uh, amount in no time like three or four days and I've definitely got in a pre-order for Into the Woods by GMT their latest installment to the Great Battle series of the American Civil War and I'm looking forward hopefully to a reprint reprint of Gettysburg someday because I have 
an old first edition with the second edition upgrade kit. I'd like to have a new version of that. And I just keep uh, waiting for anything else new and interesting to come out. World War II, Civil War, uh, especially, but I pretty much like uh, all ages and all uh, scales. So put any comments below and uh, maybe I'll do some miniatures too. I've got a little uh, English Civil War battle set up on the back part of the board here that I was going to fool around with. So I've got some 15 millimeter miniatures and I've been trying to find a good rule set for them. So I might give that a shot as well. But thank you all very much for watching and I hope you have a good gaming of your own. And take care and remember no fighting in the war room. Goodbye.